The Avro Lancaster B Mark I from Hong Kong Models in 148th scale. Is it all it's cracked up to be? From failure to success! The 4 engine Avro Type 683 Lancaster was developed from a disappointing twin engine Manchester, which suffered from engine fires caused by unreliable Rolls Royce Vulture engine insulation. However, the basic Manchester airframe was a sound design. A logical solution was to increase the wingspan and replace the two vultures with four Merlin engines. The engine insulation originally developed by Rolls-Royce for the Bufighter II was quickly adapted and fitted in graceful underslung nacelles. And here you see the workers arriving at the factory, taking their coat off and putting on an interesting design coat hook. Johnny, with his big strong arms, is now lifting everyone's coat into the roof space. Wait a minute, Johnny. Is Jane still in a coat? The prototype BT-308 made its first flight on January the 9th, 1941. And it soon proved to be an excellent, excellent aircraft. With great handling and high load capacity. Initially... Designed Manchester 3, it was soon renamed Lancaster. The general outline of the Lancaster remained the same throughout production, apart from the Mark II, which used Bristol Hercules radio engines, in case of shortage of Merlins should arise. The Mark I and Mark III were similar, differing only in the type of Merlin engine fitted. In the case of the Mark III, the Packard-built Merlin 28 was utilised. The Lancaster began to equip Bomber Command and Bomber Squadrons in early 1942, where it quickly became the backbone of the RAF Bomber Command. The type was used in many famous raids, such as Man Factory in Archburg and Spectacular Dam Busters Raid in the Mer Valley Dams, sinking the Bismarck too. This is just to name but a few. It becomes famous for its high use in accuracy bombing operations by 617 Squadron. Its 33 foot long bomb bay enabled it to carry high loads as well as spinning unkept mine used to break the real dam. Here you see one of the finished examples coming out of the factory, being driven by Jane on the tractor. Good old Jane! Factories all over the world built this design, but we the British did it best. Okay, so let's get right to it. This is the first kit of the comparison, which is the new HK Models Avro Lancaster B Mark 1. 148 scale, kit number is 01F005. So as you can see, really crisp looking box, uh, typical sort of design from uh, HK models and of course on the front here you have your number of parts which is 362 the wingspan of the completed model will be 648 millimeters and the length will be 443 millimeters on the side of the box we have uh, obviously a warning this kit is not for uh, 14 year olds and contains functions sharp edges and points not for small children a little bit of CAD drawing there on the side as well and then we have on our other side here a couple of configurations of how you can do your markings on the kit. So we've got one here, which is December 42. And we've got another one here, which is May 44. So this one is a 467 Squadron. And this one is 106 Squadron. So I won't show you the edges of the box because they are just a repeat of the, the front cover here. Um, but yeah, very nice box. So as I said, it's it's top opening. So let's have a little look inside. So here we have our Bible, our instructions. This big meaty instructions book. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. We have all of our clear parts. Now, one thing I like about the way they package this is it's got a little bit of hard cardboard in the packet to give it a little bit more security. And obviously, it is just all one sprue. There's nothing there to slide around and scratch stuff. So well done, HK. Then got the main fuselage 
in our two parts. So this is the first side, and a couple of bits and pieces in there as well. And obviously our second side. We've got our two wings, um, top and bottom, in one bag for each side. And then we've got lots and lots of sprues. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these and compare to our other kit, which is the Tamiya kit. So forgive the rustling. Obviously, I just want to go through the bits and pieces. These are some bomb details and um, parts of our spinners. This is our main engine cowling with a little bit of detail there. And obviously we've got our wheels, undercarriage, etc. And, and look at the size of those wheels. It's going to be a big old beast, obviously. But yeah, that's all looking good. We then got our decals, decal sheet. Again, it's in a, a separate sealed bag. So nice precautions. Two, two bits there. And a little bit of photo etch as well for those that love the photo etch. And then the bonus in the bottom of the box is a nice single print of the box art the only thing i don't like is obviously that but can you blame them it's their box art it's their model but that's going to be a nice little print that will go into a frame at some point and i probably what i will do is repeat the the white section here above the top cut that little bit off <coughs> and it'll look much nicer i think <coughs> but a lovely little bonus so of course our other kit in which we um, are going to compare is the tamia afro lancaster b1 b3 in 148 scale kit number 6020 now this is an old kit been around for a long time and, and obviously we haven't had an update of the lancaster for a super long time so so I'm hoping there's quite a lot of difference between this kit and the HK models kit because obviously it's been updated. So let's have a look at what comes into this box. So we have the instructions here, first off, and our decals. Now, as you can see, the decals are very much unprotected. Now, whether this was uh, this kit was bought secondhand, so whether that was the case when I first got it, when it was first made or not, I don't know. I suspect it probably was. Uh, and we've got uh, a nice list there of all of our sprues as well. So already I can tell there's not as many sprues. So that's boding well for future um, bits and pieces. A nice colour uh, print there. Just one sided of what your finished project would look like from Tamiya. And of course, um, the instructions itself, which are... Typical Tamiya. And like I say, it's an old kit. Obviously, there's a lot of blurb there about the Avro Lancaster. Uh, some really good information there and a really good e reading as well, to be honest. But we'll come to that later on. So what else do we have in a kit? Look, first of all, we have the fuselage. Now, the fuselage is not in a plastic bag, but it is stored clipped together with a bit of tape. Now, I think I'm right in saying that this was the way it was uh, boxed and that, that was protect that was the protection it gave. So there you go. That's our fuselage in two parts. And then we've got a bag here with some bits and pieces and some men. It's nice to see some figures in there as well. So this could obviously be a nice diorama piece. That's that bit. Uh, then we've got our bag here with our wing section. Again, both parts all in one bag, so that's nice and secure. We've got another sprue. This is the uh, Bombay, Bombay doors with all the bomb, bombs and accessories you can put in there, in its bag. And then we have got, oh, which I can already see there's a bit there loose. But we've got a couple of other sprues there with all our bits and pieces. And then finally, we have our glass now well done to tamia for putting it in a sealed bag it gives it some protection obviously but the added part of the card that hk has done certainly does make a big difference so as you can see from what's in the box uh we've got seven 
sprues for the Tamiya kit, and we have something like 14 sprues for the HK. So could that already be a bonus? So before we get on to the sprues, let's have a quick look at our instructions. So as you can see, the size of our instruction leaflet is humongous um, for the HK. And for the Tamiya, it is the standard A4 size, um, which is not a book. It just opens up like so. So while we've got it open, let's have a quick look at the instructions. As you can see, it's quite nicely laid out as a Tamiya instructions normally are. Quite easy to follow. And we have got a total of 14 stages to build our complete kit. And as I said, we've got our figures there as well. So be interesting to see if HK have got any figures in there. I don't think there is, but we'll, we'll have a look. But as you can see, it's nice and easy, easily set out. And then obviously in amongst our folds, we have our call outs for how um, we put our decals on and our painting, etc., is there for you. So a few options there for you with the Tamiya kit. As I say, it's an old kit. So uh, it's part of the Masterpiece Series 9. Um, I'm not quite sure what the production date is, but I guess if you look just where my finger is now, there should be a date of production for this particular kit. So that's our Tamiya instructions. So let's go on to the HK. Now, HK, uh, for those of you who have not built HK models, the instructions are, are, I think, quite good, and they don't waste worry about wasting papers, obviously. So obviously, uh, with the HK kit, there is 362 parts. With the Tamiya kit, I'll be honest, I can't find exactly how many parts there are on it, um, but I would suggest that it's probably a good 100 short of the HK. Be interesting how they split it down so let's have a quick look at the instructions there's a bit of blurb here on the history of the avro lancaster a little shout out for the symbols in which what they mean don't you know don't eat and sniff the glue and uh, don't chew on plastic etc keep away from children cautions and um, a couple of shout outs there for ak so the actual instructions themselves are very nice as i said nice and bold you know, you can't really get lost on this, can you? So we start off with a cockpit, um, which is the same as the Tamiya. Lots of detail going on in there uh, for our pilot and our navigator and all of that. Two-part seat for the... Well, no, it's not. It's the three-part three part seat for the pilot. That'd be interesting. Interesting, they've, they've made the mainframe two parts. Hmm. Didn't expect that. That's, that's interesting. So let's have a, a little look at the next bit. So then we're into the fuselage. And in our detail, we've got some clear strips there for our windows. Uh, a choice here for some PE. Uh, so you can obviously, there's an option there to take these things out. Obviously, watch out for the bits where it says you to drill holes, etc. cetera. Uh, but nicely laid out and, and easy to follow. Once we've got our two um, fuselage parts complete, put together with the innards all in there, uh, we then move on to canopies and guns, etc. So there is no masking set that I've seen uh, with this. So that'll be interesting and fun to, to do that. I'm sure there'll be some aftermarket coming out fairly soon to uh, sort your masking out for you. Um, and obviously... Again, with your uh, PE, I'm sure there'll be loads of PE come out for it, replacing the guns, etc. But we'll have a look, see what they look like. I'm sure they're in, in good order. <coughs> so then, of course, you've got your bomb bay. So this is putting all your, your bombs in. Um, and then, obviously, your wheel detail, etc. on the rear. Keeping it closed, or if you want to make it open, bomb bay's open, then there is a, a, an instruction there quite clearly to cut that piece because that comes as one piece cut that in half so you've got your opening ability to open your bombay doors fairly straightforward i would have thought but we'll look at that when we get to the to the kit parts nice big diagrams explaining the detail here for the outer surfaces um putting the cockpit together etc putting our, um, our turret guns in 
all nice and clear i'm hoping i've just noticed that there is a bit of a glare off this because it's quite a it's a matte finish instructions but it i've got lights just above the desk so hopefully you can see that then we get into the glorious engines now i'm sure beyond all reasonable doubt you can pick up these engines already i'm sure Bresin are well on that case but uh, looking at these parts here, they look fairly detailed anyway. But again, we'll have another look when we get to the kit. So you've got your wheel, uh, your wheel assembly and engine assembly and engine and cells assembly there. How to attach them to your wing. And it still continues for your other side. And then obviously attaching your wings. Now, I, I am aware that uh, we the very nice fitting here for the wind wing section uh, but we'll I'll highlight that when we come to it obviously putting your flaps and stuff on as well remember watch out for these instructions and again you've got options to make sure you choose the right options and then we've got a nice picture of our finished Lancaster nice CAD drawing that's what it should look like and then it goes into the part so this explains all your sprues what they are wait find some bits and pieces if you get lost nicely laid out nice and big nice to see that you can you know you don't have to you know i use magnifying glasses but you really don't need to do that on this nice and big and then obviously some uh decals this is what the decals come with the model uh made by cartograph and we'll have a look at those in a minute or two now obviously these colors are not correct as to what they are on the um actual physical model and i would assume the reason for that is to make sure that people don't copy it etc there you go so you got that and then you've got your call outs you've got your call outs for your um different marking sets options you've got so this is marking a uh, this is the 106 squadron uh, from december 1942 nice to see that you've got it laid out in this way so you've got both sides of the fuselage you bit of concentration on the the cockpit area because you've got some options there um and just here you have got your call out for your paints that you're going to need for doing your surfaces then we go on to option b this is um raf uh, another raf marking 467 squadron may 1944 and again set out exactly the same way a little bit of um detail extra detail here on the engines now, as you notice, they weren't on the first option. So this is an extra. Make sure you don't muddle those up. And then last but no means least, you have got your common stencils placement guide. So this would be on either option that you decide to do. Lot, quite a lot of surface decals to put on there. Uh, but it's very nicely laid out. You, you really can't go wrong. And then right at the back, you've got your color guide. So you've got some um, all the paints in which you might need for this particular model. You've got AK Interactive, Tamiya, and you've got Mr. Hobby. Uh, so, of course, with your paints, this is just a guide. You don't have to use these paints, but there are other options. But, of course, you can look online to compare uh, the models that you might, the, sorry, the paints that you might have in your own collection and what they refer to so that, so there you go that are the instructions of our two kits you've got the hk one nice and nice and big and bold uh and like i say the tamiya we didn't really scoot through it as detailed as we did on the hk but i don't think that's particularly necessary if i'm honest um but it's the same same scenario obviously cockpit uh, internals bombay wings attached to the main uh, fuselage call outs etc we did go through that so so there you go um a lot of information in a nice big glossy book um and and to be honest if you use that nicely that's something in which you could keep for future date if you wanted to use it for some other scratch building or similar sort of idea so there you go there they are the instructions so on to the decals themselves obviously these are cartograph decals I'm not sure who these are made by. Um, it's possible they are cartograph. Um, but as I say, I'm not sure of the age of the kit. So you can see some coloration problems going on with our decals on the older kit. This isn't an unusual thing. 
but it is possibly down to the way which has been stored so there you go so we have got um our main identification numbers some um nose markings etc uh, airplane numbers on the main sheet there and then we go on to our randalls etc of which we have here these are split down for the side where you put the red dot in the middle on a separate occasion uh, and a few surface detail bits and pieces here and there you've also got decals for our cockpit and um, yeah they're okay they're okay um, but I already can tell that there's a lot more going on with our HK but they're okay um, unfortunately the as I said the tissue paper that would have given some protection has gone astray but that's fine Okay, so these are our HK decals. Quite a lot of white decals going on here, so you probably won't pick those up. I might try and take a picture of those to show them in a better light. Obviously, I've got lights above the desk, so that wipes a lot of stuff out. But they look nice and clean and crisp. There is not a lot of carrier film around them, uh, which is lovely. Uh, looking at our Tamiya ones, you can probably see the carrier film is right around that so there's lots of carrier film on that probably worth i would guess cutting those down and taking some of that carrier film off bit of a bit of a pain but it's probably worth the effort but these are very nice and crisp look really really lovely so that's that part then we go on to our main sheet uh, again we've got some cockpit, cockpit detail going on here lots of lines in which you can do you can do these lines by uh, painting them on uh, but a decal can be quite much easier, to be honest. Um, we've got lots of stuff going on here. Um, walk forward of this line, walk after this line, etc. So all your walk lines, etc. That's all there. Nice and crisp, as you can see. Really, really nice. And that, let's have a look at that cockpit detail while we're nice and zoomed in like that. So, yeah, a lot going on there. Uh, if you compare that to our Tamiya, Quite a lot of difference going on there, isn't there? But I'm guessing our de detail of our cockpit will be affected by that. So while we're in that pack, our last little bit to look at is the photo etch, obviously. Obviously, that's going to get a bit of a shine on it, so I do apologise. But a nice little bit of crisp photo etch, a little bit of extra detail. For those photo etch lovers, there's not a lot going on here for the photo etch, but I think that's probably more than enough. And obviously the Tamiya kit wouldn't have any of those extra detail. Detail. Okay, so next up is the main body of the aircraft. And um, this is your HK and this is your Tamiya. Now I've taken the sellotape off the top part to allow me to open it up. But what we'll do is we'll come in nice and closely if we can. So we're coming nice and closely. You can see the inside side of our Tamiya kit. There is some surface detail, not a lot going on, but it's been yeah, actually it's fairly sparing. But in all honesty, it's in the areas in which that matter. So you've got some nice ribbing going on here, some wiring, some places for our um, boxes and stuff that go on, some control bits and pieces here, and again some of the uh, in the nose area where you might be able to see some of it. There's a bit of detail there as well. In the main body of the aircraft, there isn't a lot going on at all, all the way back. But again, with these little tiny windows, you're not really going to see very much. So that's quite acceptable for what it is. However, let's have a look at the HK. Now, you can already see, hopefully, <coughs> not wind out too much. <clears throat> A lot of surface detail going on, and it goes all the way through the fuselage, every single bit. So it's all there, and in our cockpit area, or sorry, our navigation area, and radio, there's a, a bit of stuff on the wall there. I'm sure there's other bits to go on. And again, in the nose section, there is stuff going on in there as well. Let me bring that up so you can see it. So as you can see, quite nice detail in there. Yeah, shame you're not going to see an awful lot of it, if I'm honest. Um, but there are ways in which you can get around that if you choose to do so. So that's the one side, and this is the second side. Again, just as crisp, nice surface detail going on in there, 
and that's going to look lovely, isn't that? But again, as I said, you probably won't see an awful lot of it. I did mention earlier about the wing design. So on here we have a special. Um, on here we have a special attachment for our wings. It does make it a little bit easier if you want to keep it, keep it so you can take the wings on and off. Um, depends on how your storage is. So surface detail on the HK model is very nice and very nice riveting detail. It's all there. The surface detail is singing to you all day long. That's just really nice. Um, let me bring that up nice and close so you can see what I mean. And again, the other side of our aircraft is identical in it's detail, really nice, nice and crisp. Lots going on. Having a look at the Tamiya, there is surface detail on there. Difficult to actually compare, to be honest. Let's see if I can bring that up to that. There we go. So hopefully that won't white out, but it is. Haha. <laughs> Having trouble with the black. But there is surface detail on the Tamiya. I'm not going to knock it. Obviously, it's got it's um, the old-fashioned way of attaching your wings. But the surface detail is there. I would say, if I'm honest, the surface detail is better, much better on the HK. Um, but it is there. Definitely is there. So, And, of course, our rear door is shut, closed off. So if you wanted to open that up, you'd have to cut that out. And notice the difference in size of the rear doors. That's quite a remarkable difference. Hmm. Not quite sure which one would be more accurate. I guess the HK one, because that looks very oversized to me. So that could create a problem if you wanted to open this up on your Tamiya kit, have your crew climbing in or something on a diorama. So, yeah. Not bad. So next up, let's have a little closer look at the sprues. Again, the black is the Tamiya kit and the grey is the HK kit. Now, on this particular kit, we have got our wheels, which have got a nice bit of detail on them for the grip, etc. We have our engine here. Our spinners and our landing gear. Now, the wheels are quite crisp. I quite like those. They're quite nice. Obviously, got our frame in there for our nacelles, for our engine nacelles. Uh, and there are obviously more, more than this one sprue that I'm showing. But, yeah, that looks quite nice. So looking at the HK kit, as you can tell, the detail on the engine is immensely uh, more detailed. Really looks crisp, looks absolutely lovely. There's several parts to it, obviously. Um, the only thing, if you compare like for like, which is going to be really difficult, but you possibly could be able to pick that out. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, if you compare engine like for like, they're, they're chalk and cheese, really are. This uh, the Tamiya kit is very, very plain. Yes, I'm not, I know there's bits that go on it, but there's very little surface detail on the engines. However, on the HK, I really hope you can that's coming out well for you. Absolutely looks lovely, and um, I'll be honest. Uh, that would satisfy me as a kit part over um, an extra right now that is screaming at me keep me keep me just absolutely phenomenal really really nice really crisp the tires however are very very lacking in um detail there is no tread on them whatsoever they are smooth as you like which is a real, real shame. I mean, there obviously is the 
circular parts of the molding of the tires this tire has got um obviously the little dimples to show that it's loaded it's carrying the weight of the aircraft whereas the tamiya doesn't um an easy fix but um yeah quite lacking in the detail of the wheel shame real shame but the engine i am absolutely immensely impressed with the engine a landing gear is also very detailed very very nicely done some very good subtle detail going on in there and our radiators as well really really nice um just looking at the sprue i've got in front of me i have oh yes i have these are these are the radiators um and again compare like for like there you go you can just see them there chalk and cheese really chalk and cheese i'll take some pictures of these sprues um and hopefully highlight the areas in which i'm talking about but on the nacelles here surface detail is there Riveting, it's all there, um, so not not bad, but again, quite subtle. The landing gear is devoid of uh, those little extra detail bits that you see in the HK one, which is again a shame, real real shame. So in our next box of our next bag of tricks is our engine nacelles. Now the surface detail on this is or seems to me be very much more crisper, subtle but crisper definitely get some um, panel line wash in there and bring all that out that's really really nice um your um framework here is already part of the nacelle uh, where you have to add it with the tamiya kit but yeah really really nice nice and clean and i haven't come across any flash whatsoever at the moment so that's really nice so here we're on to our um, here we're on to our, the, the uh, rear wing section, our tail plane. Nice surface detail. I'll just bring that up so you can see that. You just about to see that nice surface detail going on there on our plane, on our tail rather of our plane. Really nice. Obviously two halves to our rear section wheels our flaps are already there but i would assume not having done this before i would assume that you could potentially pose them with a little bit of effort um but interesting that they should they molded those as one piece definitely but yeah as you can see the surface detail on there is quite sublime now looking at the and uh, funny enough looking at the the tamiya kit we've got the same situation same proposition going on with our rear tail plane as in with the hk um not something i've seen before but uh, there we go but yeah again the surface detail is there um uh, it's a little bit more this this is raised detail this is uh, the the hk is not uh, so yeah this is raised detail something maybe i didn't pick out on the fuselage it would be the same but nice it's there and it certainly will will pick up washes etc and our main nacelles as well the same so yeah it's okay it's okay definitely okay but i think again we the difference between the two is quite remarkable the hk is certainly uh floating my boat a lot more awful lot more in fact so the one difference between our hk and tamia i just noticed is our flaps we have got some detail parts here on our flaps that's quite nice uh, that would be a that would be an uh, a pe extra at some point but to be honest you know what the kit again it's 
so yeah this is a pe extra that would certainly be coming in but again quite nice nice detail not sure if they are sink marks or whether they're meant to be there these little round things uh i would assume they're meant to be there but i don't know i, I don't know enough about the aircraft so i apologize for that but yeah it looks really really nice one thing i have noticed is the re the release um re release pins for the mold you can probably see them better if i show you that they're there and there are in positions where you shouldn't really be able to see them so that's nicely thought out whereas tamia there's nothing inside going on you just glue the two halves together and bob's your uncle so again we're on to our wings now uh obviously our tamia kit is in the black and the hk is in the gray so this comes together like that in a bag i've taken all about the bags out obviously you just clip that apart I like the uh, connectors. They're all they're nice and easy to use. Can't go wrong with those. He says. So yeah, nice and easy to use. And we'll look straight at the surface detail, shall we? Let's bring us in a little bit closer. So look at the surface details you can see nicely done uh, again recessed nice panel lines nice riveting details it's all there it's everything's what you want it to be exactly where it should be and again uh, we've got some detail going on here for our flaps so these are obviously uh, posable to, to, to a point and the surface detail on the main top part is lovely really really lovely very crisp very very nicely done indeed looking at the tamia obviously it comes is two sprues slightly different but the sur again the surface detail is there but it is raised detail it is not uh, anything more than that so it's nice it's there uh you can can work with it quite well but again the difference with this he says just double checking before he does yeah these two bits just glued together and that's your lot so if you want to have your flaps down and all that sort of stuff you're going to have to do uh, a bit of cutting and a little bit of work to get that to look right and again the connectors old-fashioned connectors on the i'll just slot them into the the wings but yeah, I mean the details there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. The detail is definitely there, but it's a an old fashioned type of detail, and we are getting very spoiled in our in the difference of detail that we get. You know, um, panel lines not being raised and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, really, really nice. Much better. Much more my cup of tea, if I'm honest. So let's come out of that yeah a lot more cup of tea for me a lot more a lot more like my cup of tea but could build up to a reasonable model you know um, it'd be interesting to see quite how they work out but obviously uh you the one thing i do like about hk is that they're both the wing sections are literally clipped together and put in a bag so there is no way in the world that that can get damaged in transit um and you, you can already see that the fit is going to be absolutely wonderful. So a nice teaser. So next up on the bench is our cockpit detail. Our comparison continues. Uh, we'll start with the HK example. And I can already spot, look at the, the lovely detail that's there. Some lovely bit of detail going on in there for the interior interior of our cockpit now I am aware with the uh, 132 HK there were some comments about the seating area of the pilot being incorrect um, if you want to change that you'll you know that's up to you but me personally I would just build it out of the kit uh, it's not gonna make a great deal of difference on a 148 if i'm honest but 
uh, yeah if you want to be accurate then just bear that in mind we've got some nice surface good detail going on in here as well these are the walls for our um cockpit etc wiring looms etc um the radio it's just there by my thumb hopefully that's coming out lots and lots of bits going on in here and I, i'm not gonna lie i don't know half of them in fact i don't know less than half of them so i'm not even gonna bother trying to wing it so uh yeah that's looking nice and crisp uh lots of dials and stuff for interior so the interior will be really good fun to to make i think uh we've got parts of our seating there i believe that is or it might be i'm not sure but yeah really really nice and again uh devoid of flash there was no flash and, and in fairness to tammy i not seeing any flash on theirs either so but yeah that looks nice and crisp that does uh looking at the the difference with the tamiya so here we have got our instrument panel straight off the bat devoid of any anything whatsoever so that is purely a decal that you put on top of that um which is a bit of a shame really but i can understand why they did that at the time in which this kit was made you've got a box there of goodies so you've got some um raised detail on there um but it's it's yeah basic beyond basic in fact it's it's just blobs of plastic so shame um let's have a quick look yeah most of the detail is actually on the bit that i'm showing you so obviously we've got a pad in here for our seating etc etc and i would assume that is the seat itself there which is uh, yeah limited this is a three-part seat like the seat in the hk i said it was three or four parts um but that's super basic really really basic so not a great deal of internal um detail for you to play with uh the guns are on here as well and if you can just about see that i hope there is there's just nothing going on there at all is there really it's very basic very very basic even the steering wheel itself is very basic so we'll compare that to our um hk1 in a second oh looks like i've got a hair there not mine because i haven't got hair let's go back to this sprue very quickly and oh yeah so our steering wheel is fairly similar not a great deal going on there so but it's nice and crisp a little bit of flash there i've noticed but that's fine it's easily remedied um yeah so i just love in the detail on here um hopefully that is picking that up properly yeah so hopefully you can pick that detail out on that piece just there just here lots of detail going on there lots and lots so for those that like the detail detailing in a cockpit there's lots going on in there we'll move on to this sprue here which is our uh bombay nice and crisp in its um detail continues through the rest of the bits and pieces our bulkheads have got nice bits of detail on this will be part of our turret gun i would assume then of course we have the detail of our pilot's position which i have got to show that so look at the difference in the detail that you have here there is so much going on there highly highly detailed section for our pilot and our cockpit absolute joy to bring that to life that will be fantastic on the tamiya kit we've got two part bombays but I, <laughs> release pins on the inside and also so that's not good you're probably not going to see it anyway but uh now as you can see i'll show you this again They look at the difference of the the surface detail that you've got. This is the HK, obviously, and the top one is our um, Tamiya. 
there's just it's chalk and cheese isn't it it's just phenomenal so much more detail such a shame uh obviously you've got your positions there for your bombs etc i can understand why they've done it that way but a bit a bit lazy got to be honest obviously a cheaper way of doing it but yeah so we'll carry on looking through the sprue on this particular one we've got a bomb detail etc here uh no next to no surface detail on our bombs you know there are a couple of rings and bits and pieces but nothing really going on at all um and again raised detail here on our doors so here are our bombay doors from hk again nice recessed lines um your rivet detail on there is absolutely lovely and it's the same with the internals there again release marks within the internal but let's be honest fairly easy to clean up i would think um and unless you're going to stick a mirror, a mirror underneath it no one's going to see that no one's going to see that at all but very nice very nice indeed and before we get on to the clear plastic i just want to have a quick look at these this is obviously another bit of detail this is to do with our turret gun etc um this is our oh this is our actually our pilot seat um a lot of detail on there considering uh let me see if i can so a lot of detail going on in our pilot seat hopefully that's coming out all right you can see it's not whiting out too much but it's um recessed lines etc on there it's you know it's a lot of attention being taken on 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 that very nice um and again we've got other bits and pieces going on as well here like i said this is all part of the gun i haven't seen any oh there we are look these these are the actual guns themselves and compared again compared to the tamiya kit um chalk and cheese without so these are the guns and as i said these are chalk and cheese that the, the detail on there is very subtle but it's all there it's all there so again uh, a detailer's dream right there really really nice i, I like what you've done there it's a lot lot better than the tamia again like i said you can buy aftermarket barrels and guns and all that sort of stuff you can certainly get it for the, the tamia kit um but it's nice to have it in the in what you buy the, the kit itself is not a cheap kit uh, even the tamia one now isn't a cheap kit but um you know even the bomb aimer part there is is highly detailed no mistake so next up from the hk set is the propellers now obviously on the um tamia kit they are a solid piece whereas these are something you build up and the actual prop surfaces are nice and smooth they look correct uh, and they i can already see the way in which they fit in is quite is quite well designed so they will look quite nice then our bombs have got nice surface detail now here is the difference this is really is the difference let me let me bring you in nice and close so as you can see on this you've got a nice recessed gap on the top of our bomb there you've got um the the fin is made up of several pieces nicely layered so that you can put so much detail into these beautiful bombs um you know the ends have got out the detonator etc exposed looks so much better so so much better the detail is wonderful really 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 happy with that so before we get on to the the last part of our kit which is our clear parts i thought it only fair that we pointed out the figures there are no figures with the hk model however there are four nice figures with tamia now tamia tamia are known for reasonably crisp figures 
uh, and these aren't that bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are 70s-ish, 80s, but the detail is there, and I, I know <laughs> he's got his two fingers up, look. Um, I like that. That's a, that's a lovely figure, um, and the posing is great. You can do so much with that. Um, it's a shame HK haven't managed to get some on there. Um, but yeah, like those, really nice figures. Nice little addition to the set. And uh, I can see those coming into, into use with either kit. So our last section is the clear parts. Now, as, as I pointed out before, HK have put a nice bit of cardboard in the bag. Gives them a little bit of extra protection. Not something I've seen before. Uh, a note to other manufacturers. That's a really good idea. I like that a lot. And I think a lot of model makers will. So first off the bat, obviously we're looking at uh, straight out of the bag and we've got extra protection on a, a little bit of uh, plastic cover over the surface of some of our model, uh, sorry, of our clear parts. Nothing on the, the main cockpit area, which is a real shame. However, uh, it's good that they've done something. Now, let's have a quick look at the HK. All the plastic is incredibly see-through. It is no imperfections on any of that whatsoever really crisply done and i'll be honest i don't think i've i've seen anything like that before on a model so um let's bring you in as you can see really really clear beautifully clear plastic and not going to be that hard to put our uh, masking sets on there because that's very defined, very nicely done, and that, that will look amazing. Absolutely amazing. On our other window surfaces, again, just so crisp and, and lovely. Our turret surface there, surface detail is there on there as well. Really, really good. I don't want to take these bits of plastic off because, you know, they are what they are. Um, but I can assure you the detail is very much there. Very cool. Whereas our Tamiya, we have the outlines on here. Uh, again, raised detail. Um, we have the outlines of what we want. Um, but the difference between this and the HK is where we have our framing for our cockpit there is rivet detail literally rivet detail on that whereas this is devoid of anything it's just a line <coughs> the plastic itself is clear a little bit cloudy in some areas but uh, no I, I give i give tammy the due that's not bad that's not bad clear plastic that's not bad clear plastic at all really so a lot going on there um or oh, sorry not a lot going on with the tamiya but it's 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 clear and it looks okay but the difference between that and the hk again like i said i'll try and get you up nice and close to this yeah i'll try and i'll try and pick out that detail on the cockpit itself with a photo because unfortunately this camera's just not going to pick it up properly it's a real shame because it really does need to be seen um yeah that's not it's not really working is it you might be able to see it a little bit better there but i'll take a picture of it and we'll i'm going to do some pictures at the end of the sprues to show you what they are so there you go that's the comparison of the old tamiya uh kit which has now been um updated if you like by the uh hk models 148 both 148 scale the build-up is exactly the same length and wingspan. So just to remind you, that's a length of uh, 443 millimetres and 648 millimetres in wingspan. So it's a big old bird. Um, my conclusions are obviously the the, the dated uh, variant of, that was done by Tamiya. I can see why it desperately needed to be updated. Um, we are spoiled with the amount of, of detail in which we like on our models now and hk have 100 percent delivered i can't see any issues as of yet um but it all looks absolutely amazing 
so there you go thank you very much for watching this comparison of the avro lancaster from tamia and hk models i hope it's been of some interest to you bear in mind these kits are on the more expensive end of the hobby you know if the subject is something you really love then um i, I would recommend buying one of them if you want to go for the hyper detail um and and that's your thing that floats your boat go for the hk models it's definitely got everything there if you are in for more of a challenge shall we say where you want to add extras that you buy or scratch build the tamir is the one to go for uh, and believe you me you can certainly use this kit for many many different things in that it's a good base in which you can add stuff to whereas the the, the hk i would say yeah, it's a a shake and bake kit there's not really a lot you need to do to that um i mean there are of course there are aftermarket stuff but this 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 is more than sufficient uh for the price it is whereas if you want to cut this one up do it as a crash or or any other sort of example in which you want to make and you're into your scratch building use this as a base this is very it's a good enough kit for that uh, and like i say the, the main difference on what you see on the outside is that this has got research recess panel lines and riveting and everything on this is um is not basically it's just raised everything so good for its time glad we got the, a new one so i hope this comparison has been of some use to you if you have liked this video please make sure you put a thumbs up if you disliked it put a thumbs down but take the time and trouble to tell me why you didn't like it because that helps me make you content if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you subscribe. There are other comparison kit reviews coming, as well as lots of other bits and pieces. 